Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this one was a while back, I believe somebody asked me about this on Twitter. Um, but I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't put passwords in command lines because anyone on your machine can view them. And I'm going to demo that and show you uh, how you can fix this problem. Uh, I'm going to use MySQL as an example, but it's going to vary tool by tool. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first I wanted to show you, um, you know, a, a command and then showing that I can view all of those command line parameters in this terminal over here. So I'm going to use Python just for sake of demonstration, but any command is going to work basically the same way. And this is specific to Unix machines. This is going to be completely different on Windows, so <laughs> uh, keep that in mind. And we're going to import time. Uh, I'm just going to do time.sleep10 just so that we can, uh, you know, show... <laughs> show it hopefully while it's running. So if we do this, we can actually do ps-ef. This will show all of the commands that are running as well as their command line arguments. And we're gonna grep for, oh, I didn't do it fast enough. <laughs> uh, we're gonna grep for sleep. So you can see here that we see the exact process that I was running over here. And we can see that, you know, these are the command line arguments that were passed to it. Uh, we can also post, put more Ws here and it will not trim the uh, command line arguments because if, if this gets too long, uh, PS will decide to cut this off. But you might imagine that you pass in some password here and so maybe, you know, bad password. Uh, this is similar to the dash P argument that the MySQL command line takes. And you'll see if we run this and I were to PS well, <laughs> WWEF, uh, you'll see that the password shows up in plain text here. And, you know, this might seem normal. This is my user viewing my own processes, so sure, I can see my own passwords. Uh, but the problem is anyone on your machine can see those passwords. So if you're in like a shared workspace where someone else can see those, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be able to see this password directly. And I'll show you that directly. Uh, let's say we, you know, do this a little bit longer and we change to nobody, which is another, which is a user that usually has minimal permissions on a machine. Uh, and we have nobody run that same command. And we grep for sleep. Um, we need to, of course, type in the password there. You'll see that even as nobody, we can still see this password here. Uh, the other problem with typing the passwords on the command line is they're going to show up in your history. So if we uh, cancel this, if we do history and then tail dash 10, that'll show us the last 10 entries of our history. You'll see that those passwords end up on, you know, in that history file. And so they're saved on disk in plain text as well. And you don't want either of those things to happen because, you know, if somebody got a hold of that file, they would have all of your passwords. And if somebody was on your machine and viewing all the process that, that you're running, they can see the passwords as well. Now, the usual fix for this is to use one of kind of three different approaches. One is, uh, well, and of course, the command line itself has to change. So like uh, taking the password as a command line argument is a bad interface. And there's kind of three fixes to that. One is to have a configuration file where, you know, you put you put the password in a conventional place on disk uh, and the program will read that config file and read the password out of there. Another is to use a key ring, uh, you know, similar approach, like it is on disk somewhere, but your operating system is managing that. Uh, another is an environment variable. So you store the environment variable in, in some, you know, environment modification, which doesn't end up in your history or, um, you know, globally readable. And then the program will read that environment variable. That's another approach. And the last is to read it from standard in instead. So, um, you know, one, one particular command that does this is the twine command. It will read it from standard in when you do this. Um, and uh, you'll notice that the MySQL documentation also has all of these different approaches. So you can actually use any of those approaches with MySQL. Uh, as you'll see, like you can pass it on the command line, but this is usually not a good idea. Um, convenient, but insecure, in exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, you can pass dash dash password, but not have the value and it will read it. Uh, it will ask you to type it in on standard in. You can also put it in a config file. And last but not least, you can store it in this environment variable. Um, and so if you're designing a command line interface, yeah, don't take passwords as your input and try and use one of these similar interfaces to do that. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you, which is kind of just like a little extra tidbit from this video, 
is uh, you can hide a command from showing up in your bash history by putting spaces in front of it. So if we did, you know, echo secrets, but I've typed some spaces beforehand, you'll see that if I look at the last history entries, we don't actually see that at all. And that's just due to this white space here. But anyway, hopefully those were some useful tips here. Uh, if you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.